The last thing we have to do for our home screen is make sure that a user can tap on either this button or this touchable opacity and get navigated over to the appropriate screen. So in this video, we're going to figure out exactly how to do that. And the first thing I want to remind you about is that inside of our app.js file, this project came pre-configured with this stack navigator thing. This stack navigator is what's going to allow us to navigate or essentially change the content that is visible on the screen to our users. Let's talk about how we can directly manipulate this stack navigator. Okay, so quick diagram. So on the left hand side, of this diagram is our stack navigator. This is an object, like I said, it decides what to show on the screen at any given point in time. So the stack navigator itself is responsible for deciding to show home screen, list, or component screen. When the stack navigator shows any one of these different components, it renders it, and in the process, it passes down a set of configuration options. Remember, we refer to these different configuration options as props. At this point, we've only seen an example of props that we pass into a primitive component. So for example, inside of our home screen file, you and I passed in a prop to that text element of style. And here's a prop we passed into button of on press, one for title, and so on. Props are not limited to just primitive elements created by React Native, however. Components that you, create, you and I create, such as our home screen, or a list screen, or whatever else, can also receive props as well. So in React, we can both pass props in, which is what you're seeing right here, and we can also receive configuration options, or props, into a component that we create. When the Stack Navigator shows one of our components and passes in that props object, the props object has a lot of different properties tied to it. One of the properties inside there is a function that we can call inside of our code and tell the Stack Navigator that we want it to change some content that is visible on the screen. So let's first try to just receive this props object inside of our home screen component. We'll do a console log of the props object and just kind of inspect some of the different properties or different options that were given inside of our home screen. Okay, so back inside of our home screen, I'm gonna find const home screen, the function declaration right up here at the top. Whenever a component that you and I create is passed a props object, it always shows up as the first argument to this function. So we usually call this props like so. Then inside of our function body, we can console log out that props object. So now anytime that our home screen appears on our device, as it is right here, we should see this console log appear in our terminal at the same exact time. Okay, so I'm gonna save this. If I now flip back over to my terminal, I'll see that console log. So this big console log right here is all the different properties that exist inside of that props object. Now reading this console log is a little bit challenging. So let me just walk you through it very quickly. This is essentially saying that we've got a props object, like that's the top level object right there. And then inside that object, there is a navigation property. The navigation property points to an object and that navigation object has keys of actions, add event listener, dangerously get parent, dismiss, dismatch, and so on. So everything that you're seeing inside this console log right here is all nested inside of navigation. So in other words, just to make sure it's really clear, we could update this console log of props to props.navigation like so, and then we'll just see that inner object. So I'll save this once again, flip back over, and now if we scroll down a little bit, we should see a second console log. There it is right there. And now we're seeing a console log of just the props.navigation object. Just to be clear, this navigation property, like this entire object right here, is added in specifically by that React Navigation Library, or more specifically, by the Stack Navigator that we're making use of. So a normal React component is not going to be just magically provided some big navigation object. Instead, it is specifically given to us because our component is being shown by that Stack Navigator. All right, so with that in mind, if we now look really carefully inside this object, You'll notice that inside of here, there's one very specific property inside of here, and it's called navigate. Navigate is a function that we can use to change the content that is visible on the screen of our device. We can call this navigation or this navigate function with a string. If we pass in a string that matches one of the different route names that are defined inside of our app.js file, let's flip over there really quickly. So here's app.js. Here's our route object right here that describes all the different routes that we can navigate to inside of our application. So we can call that navigate function and pass in a string of home or components 
or list. When we do so, we'll then see the appropriate component appear on the screen immediately. And that's pretty much it. That's the whole ballgame. Okay, so let's now test this out. To test it out, I'm going to go back over to my home screen component. I'm going to clean up that console log that we have right there. And I'm going to find my button and replace the console log inside there. So not the entire function, just the console log. I'll replace it with props.navigation.navigate. Again, that's a function that we can call, and we can pass in a string that points to one of these other routes that we've defined inside of our Stack Navigator. So in this case, their button says go to components demo, so we probably want to navigate over to components. So inside the navigate function, I'll put in a string with components like so. And that's pretty much it. So let's now save this, and we'll test out our application. I should now be able to tap on go to components demo, and I'll see some navigation automatically occur. So now we are seeing our components demo screen or component visible. And you'll notice inside the header, React Navigation, that's the library we are using to show different content, has automatically added in a back button right there. And if I tap on that back button, I go back to the original home screen. OK, so this is perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. I should be able to replicate all this on my Android device as well. So if I tap on Go to Components Demo, yep, I navigate over. And then in the header right there, I've automatically got a back button that I can tap and go back to my home screen. Perfect. OK, so let's take a quick pause right here. When we come back to the next video, we're going to add in the same functionality to our touchable opacity as well.